Come friend, now lend me an ear For a tale of Victor the Weird He went on an adventure with he, him, and himself And also his mighty fine beard Now gather round, I'll tell you About this mighty beast He may look as human as me or as you, friend But soon your eyes will feast Upon this marvelous creature With many body parts His one shirt may fool you But what if I told you his chest had four red hearts? One mouth but a thousand voices, one mind and limited choices, two handsome dice, two handsome nice. The audience rejoices, he's going to play the indeed, with him, himself, and he. Those are his pronouns, it's really profound, it's time for D and D, featuring Victor and Victor and Victor, and Victor and Victor and Victor, and Victor and Victor and Victor and Victor and Victor and Victor. That song always, I sing it along as it goes by. Uh, hello, I'm Victor Rivera, and this is D&Me, where I play with myself. I play D&D with myself, and welcome to episode 15. That theme song is produced and performed by Bradley Owens. You can find them at Bradley Ovens, that's bread, L-E-Y, ovens, on Instagram. How fun! Welcome! I'm excited. I'm back house-sitting, so it's a whole new adventure. So, welcome. Uh, I only have a couple things for Dean pre-show. One being I accepted a new side gig this uh, Monday, so I uh, timing's going to be a little different. But I still want to be here every week for Dean me Twitch stream on Wednesdays and then throwing it up on YouTube Thursday morning. And this is a a fun weekly commitment for me. And then the other part is that the podcast is not sustainable the way I'm doing it. So I have four episodes out for the podcast. And we're at episode 15 now. (laughs) So I will find a new way. But for now, I need that side gig and I need rent monies. So until I make hundreds of dollars for me to live in a place, then I will be focusing on that. Uh... But if you want to, you know, give me hundreds of dollars, then I would be more than happy to uh, do the podcast to edit that. So, oh boy. Oh, and then the last thing, last episode, I didn't have a, a fun name for three strings. The bard playing at the Yawning Portal, and then about an hour after I finished recording last week's episode, then I was like, oh, I came up with it. So... Hello, I am Three Strings, the human bard for the Yawning Portal, and my real name is James Buffet. I was trying to come up with like a very lounge singer, what's Las vegas and James Buffet is very good. So, now going on to Dean Recap, episode 12, 13, and 14 all kind of squished together, so let's piece the meal that out. Episode 12, they got the deed to the Troll Skull Manor, and then as they were going about filling it up, then they exchanged some wood and metal goods from their inventory and met some local shopkeepers slash their neighbors. And then episode 14, which is called episode 12.5, explores the latter half of that day. So Toot Toot and Rock went down to common items to get some just general, you know, fantasy stuff, but like the cheap stuff. Not all the fantasy, fancy ring, magical rings and stuff. So they got a tinderbox and a broom and healing potions and a healer's kit and crossbow bolts, where so they went to common items, which is that general store, and then Rock went back up to the Troll Skull Manor, where Onyx and Tipsy were waiting, bored out of their gourd, and Tipsy ended up giving Onyx a whole bunch of the hides that he was hanging onto for a while. To which we found out Onyx really, really loves trophies and bones and hides, so that's his. 
his his way of connecting. And then Tutut finished off the episode by going down to the yawning portal to hand back the keys since they have their own place so they don't need to spend the night at the yawning portal anymore. They He handed off the keys to Durnan, and then he threw Yagra Stonefist, the half-orc thug bodyguard, Tutut was introduced to Davil Starsong, who is one of the heads of the Black Network, or the Zents, Zent Tarim, and Davil made him an offer to learn more about the Black Network, and Tutut wasn't very interested, so he left, and then uh, James Buffet, or Three Strings, approached him and offered him more information about the Harpers, which is another faction, which are the good guys. Um, so, after talking with three strings, then Tutu was trying to leave, but then Bonnie, the strawberry blonde waitress at the yawning portal, blinked, blinked, and then her eyes turned purple, and then asked if Tutu was good, and Tutu responded, yes? And then Bonnie took him upstairs to the second floor, and then into a hotel room where... Don't worry, it's going to be fine. Where he saw Ago, who was a tiefling badass babe in episode 6, Skewer Dragon? Let's see. Episode 5, The Skewer Dragon. So, they had a mysterious scene that I didn't play out, so that the audience has a little dramatic irony. And then Tutut left with a gold dragon which is what they called a gold piece in his hand with a little purple opal inside it looking like an eye and then he headed back to the troll skull manor where everyone else was sitting waiting when their beds were delivered by the forest for the trees which is a woodworking uh tree ent and wood woad and strange wooden robot uh, run business uh, that specializes in wood furniture and weapons and items and stuff. So then they settled down for the night where we had episode 13, which is Dean Spooky, which was my Halloween episode, where then as they were about to settle down for the night, creepy things started to happen. And then we find out that the Troll Skull Manor is indeed haunted a little bit by a half-elf previous owner of the location named Leaf. And through some scary spirit Halloween themed adventures then at the end the boys told Leaf that they are planning on living there and sprucing it up and then Leaf uh, turned turned good so that is where we left off I will however go to the next day because at the beginning of episode 14 I did tease that everyone was awake and then i was like well actually i want to go back but now everyone sleeps in uh has a full long rest so they regain all their hit points they regain all their spell slots and toot toot actually wakes up to the sound of this and toot toot wakes up looks around his room and he sees a photograph coming out of the hidey hole that he shoves Tipsy in the night before to find out some more clues about Leaf. And the photograph is sliding out of the very small cracked opening of the hidey hole. And Toot Toot, from his giant California king-size bed... Well, would it be called something else for fantasy stuff? Yeah, California emperor bed. He wakes up and goes... Leaf? Is that you? And then the photograph stops and then materializes half in the wall, half out of the wall uh, is the half-elf, bald half-elf with pointy ears and a chevelt vest and long sleeve but half his face is still in the wall and with his right hand he's taking the photograph out from his hidey hole and he looks over at Tutu Huh? Good morning, Leaf. <laughs> and then from the wall 
comes his left hand and then just waves at Toot Toot. Do you need assist here? Let me excuse me. <laughs> and then he gets out of his very big bed. Excuse I uh I I I don't have a shirt on, but let me help you. And Leaf kind of backs up. And then Toot Toot opens the hidey hole more. There you go, so you don't have to sneak around a bit. Uh, oh! And then Toot Toot leans down and looks into the hidey hole, and half of the stuff has been removed from it. Where last night, it was a hoarder's kind of nightmare of... Photographs and scraps of paper and love letters wallpapering the inside of this, oh, two foot by two foot tall kind of cubby that is in the wall. And Tutu bends down and looks at, Leaf, you've been doing some work. I, oh, do you, I think, huh, uh, do... where are you taking these things? Are, are you Okay. And Leaf nods, and then uh, Toot Toot goes, Well, I I understand as part of your spectral form you are to stay here for a while, and I, I sincerely hope that you do. Have you found a new place to be? And Leaf huh, looks straight up at the ceiling and then skyrockets just through the ceiling except... He has the photograph in his hand, so he goes up, and then the photograph thump, hits the ceiling, and you can see his spectral fingers, like three of them, like trying to grasp at it, and then the photograph starts to fall, and then a hand comes down from the ceiling to grab the other end, and then Leaf kind of lowers back down, kind of embarrassed, and Tutu goes, oh, are you upstairs? May I see? I think I, think I and perhaps the photograph, will take the stairs. And Leaf, f- f- uh, coming back all the way down, nods. And Tutu goes, may I see the photograph? I, I respect if you do not. And Leaf cocks half a smile and hands over the photograph. And he see- Tutu accepts the photograph and sees Leaf on the left side of the picture in the forefront with a female half-elf half on the right side kissing Leaf's cheek, and in the background is a nice seaside vista view. So Tutu goes, oh, that's lovely. And that's that's you, that's that handsome fellow right there. And that's Estella, and Leaf nods. Hmm. Well, do you... Do you want me to try and find Estella? Or or are you... You want closure? Or do you think she wants closure? And Leaf go. Leaf <laughs> doesn't need to, but Leaf <sighs> sighs. And then takes the photograph from Tutu's hand and then goes quickly out into the hallway and then up the stairs. And Tutu goes, Ah. Oh, a heavy heart. And then follows Leaf into the hallway and then up the stairs. Uh huh. Up the stairs. And the attic bedroom door on the left is open. And Toot Toot pokes his head in and goes, Oh, wow. And inside this pretty big rectangular room is half the stuff that was in the cubby hole. So the love letters are arranged nicely on one wall, pretty much covering up a uh, 10 by 10 foot wall. Yes, that matches. Well, what is the scale of this? Yes, yes. That matches the the map by Dyson Logos. Thank you, Dyson. And they're all spaced out nice and orderly. And then... Leaf, it seems that throughout the night, Leaf has been taking one piece of paper at a time from the hidey hole and is starting to turn this room into like a lived in space. And then Tutu goes, Oh, this is brilliant, Leaf. This is, I, I am very glad we have plenty of room. So I am glad that you are considering this a home. 
Oh, and then Tutut steps to the windows and looks out. <gasps> and you have quite a view. This is, Leaf, this is very nice. I can see why you want to stay here, honestly. Now, as we, as we take care of this Trollskull Manor, as it was once called, we will definitely come up with a better name. Do you want furniture? I know you are good. Do you, do you want a bed? Do you sleep? Then Leaf shakes his head. No, do, here's something. If uh, we will definitely go, this is such a sparse, unfurnished area. We will definitely go back to the forest for the trees, and I will pick up something nice for you. I think maybe a desk. A desk would be fun. Maybe a set of dressers, but you don't have any clothes. But maybe some, maybe like a cabinet or something. But I think a nice chair. Right here to look out this window into Waterdeep. I think that would be very nice. Would you like that? And Leaf bashfully bows his head and holds the photograph close to his chest and his heart. And Tutu goes, very well. I will absolutely... You know what? Actually... That's a very good... You stay... Leaf, you stay here. Well, actually, you... Ha <laughs> ha I have lots of ideas now. Leaf, you continue emptying out whatever you need from that space and whatever other nooks and crannies in this manner. We want you to be a part of the team, out and proud. So you t take as much time as you want. And then Toot Toot starts clamoring down. He goes down the stairs and he calls up the stairs. But don't go into Rock's room! And dum, dum, dum. and as Toot Toot is going from the attic bedroom down into the stairs into the main foyer of the third floor, then he's looking around and going, oh, oh, Leaf. And then he knocks on Rock's library and study, and then <laughs> Rock comes to the door in a nightgown and the nightcap, very much Scrooge. But Rock is a happy boy instead. So Toot Toot knocks on the door. Rock opens it. Oh, good morning, Toot Toot. How may I help you? Ugh. And Toot Toot goes, Rock, good morning. May I have some paper? And Rock goes, uh, I have. Just let me. Mm. And then he looks at his very barren bookshelves and you know when there are bookshelves and then there's like that pillar in the middle? Well, he has like 13 or 17 like books and scrolls, but just at one intersection of the shelves. And again, shelves take up three-fourths of the walls in this librarian study and Rocco's. I have ten pieces of parchment. Uh, do you need one or two? And Tutu goes... I will, may I take them all and then reimburse you? And Rock goes, ah, well, that is my entire stock of paper. And then Toot Toot, ah, well, hold on. And then Toot Toot goes into his room, grabs his coin purse and comes out. How much is a piece of parchment? Uh, a piece of parchment, I believe, is uh, one silver. All right. Then Toot Toot digs around in his small little coin purse. Here's four gold. So if I buy all ten uh, sheets of your parchment, then you you can replenish and then get thirty more pieces, please. And Rock goes, ah, uh, deal. Here you go. Here is ten sheets of parchment. Do you need? I have a ink. I'm going to go get other ink. Like I need the magic ink, toot toot. But. Do you need something to write with? And Toot Toot, toot, toot goes, I don't know. Do I have a pencil or something? <sighs> Does that four gold cover an ink pen? <laughs> and then Rock goes, well, certainly, here you go. And hands over ten sheets of parchment and one ink pen. And Toot Toot gives him four gold. And then as Toot Toot clambers back up, 
Tutu turns around and sees a photograph zip up the stairs. And then Tutu following that goes, up. Uh, rock, I will... Hold on! <laughs> so he goes upstairs, and inside the attic bedroom is Leaf arranging another photograph, and Toot Toot splays out the ten sheets of parchment and goes, Leaf, I don't know how long you've been here, and we will find out your whole backstory, I promise, one day. But here are ten sheets, of, ten blank pages of parchment and an ink pen. I imagine you've been here for quite a while, and... Let's say you've been passionate about this tavern. I would love all of your ideas for the tavern, for how to make this building the best it can be. And Leaf gives a silent, just his mouth is open. <gasps> and Tutu goes, yes. And I imagine you don't sleep, so that's a full 24 hours a day, 10 days a week, 10 days a 10 day. And Leaf heads towards Toot Toot, and Leaf <sighs> straightens up, puts his left arm at an angle behind his back, and then extends his right arm out and offers just a mighty handshake. And Toot Toot, ha, huh, ah, uh, my pleasure, and then grasps Leaf's semi corporeal hand. So it's a, a nice. The handshake. And then Toot Toot, as he's heading down the stairs, goes, And since you don't sleep, did you clean everything? And then still standing straight up, Leaf puts his right arm whoop, behind his back and then gives a prim whoop, nod. And Toot Toot goes, You are an asset. Thank you. Goodness gracious. And then he goes downstairs and meets... The other sleepy, wakey, yuppy boys. And... Yes. So, they all meet in the... First floor in the tap room. And they've kind of... Well, in everyone's room, first of all, there is no dust whatsoever. Because Leaf spent th their sleeping hours sweeping up. And cleaning up pretty much everything. So now, instead of just being a dilapidated, four-story tall, mm, creepy place, now it's a, well, at least it's clean, four-story four -story tall, dilapidated manner. And all of the chairs have been organized downstairs. So there's columns of chairs that are still functional. And then there's just a pile of all the half-broken chairs and half-broken tables. And it's like when you put up a restaurant, if you've ever worked a restaurant job, then like all the tables are kind of pushed to the side and the chairs are all stacked up. So that is all orderly now instead of just the dumpster pile of <laughs> wood here and there that the first couple days were. And Tipsy is sitting in one of the chairs, and he's just rubbing his eyes. <laughs> we need food! And, and coffee! And we don't have any of that. And then, if we... Uh, if we... And then he puts his elbows on his knees and leans... He puts his head in his hands and leans forward. If we turn this place into, like, a real functional tavern where people give us money... Oh, are we gonna have rooms, too? Is Are we gonna be an inn? Anyways, we need supplies and, like, beer and ale and wine. And not just for me. <laughs> and he looks over at Onyx, who is, like, rubbing his nose just in the morning. Like, he's got real sleepy eyes going on. Oh, no. I'm making myself yawn. Then they all meet down at the bottom, and Toot Toot goes, Good morning, everyone. Leaf did a fabulous job cleaning up, so we need to say, Thank you, Leaf! And then Rock says, Thank you, Leaf! And Tipsy goes, I'm hungry! <laughs> so Toot Toot goes, Okay, so 
Last episode was a very toot toot heavy episode. But I imagine everyone has something they still want to do. Shopping has been, you know, it's been paced out. But uh, if we are to explore more of Waterdeep, I would recommend us pairing off just for safety. Um, I, I know Rock rather well, so Onyx, Tipsy, I would like to spend the day with you if I can. And Tipsy goes, Sure! Sure, Elephant Man, as long as we can get some food. Yes, we will get some food. I, And then during that, Onyx saddles up right next to Rock and is facing the same way Rock is facing, so they're side by side. And Rock looks down with a smile, and then on- on- Onyx is still looking straight ahead, rubbing his nose. Mm-hmm. And Rock goes, oh, this is th- th- exciting. I, I don't know you... Th- all that well, Onyx. And Onyx looks up at Rock. Uh huh. <laughs> Onyx is awkward, and I love it. So now, because I have a bunch of stuff that Tipsy wants to do, well, I have a main thing for each Tipsy, Onyx, and Rock. So now we're gonna roll to see which kind of story we go down. And the way pacing has been for my episodes, even though now it's a a two-and-a-half-hour show, which I think works out very well for, like, a Twitch. That's a a meaty Twitch episode and YouTube episode. And then for podcast, when I do it, then it'll be a good, like, two-hour episode instead of the hour and 37 minutes or whatever. So... Tipsy is one, Onyx is two, Rock is three, Tipsy is four, Onyx is five, Rock is six. First roll of the night, six, Rock. Oh, boy. So, the boys leave Trollskull Manor, lock up, and then go outside. And then we have all four boys out in front of the Trollskull Manor, and... Toot Toot, the lawfully good one, locks up, and then it's kind of... I love how D&Me is very video game inspired. All the imagery and functionality, because we are in a close-up of... We're in a medium shot of Toot Toot locking the door, and then as he's going down the stairs, then it widens out to all four boys standing in height order. So it's Tipsy, Onyx, Rock, and Toot Toot. And then Toot Toot kind of st- files in line, and then <laughs> then you see my die, six-sided die, and then it winds up on six, and then the camera pushes in towards Rock, and Rock goes... <gasps> Let's go, Onyx! <laughs> and then they they head out, so... Rock. And then in the background of this happening, then Tutut and Tipsy uh, start going southward, and Tipsy goes, Breakfast burritos! And is running ahead, and then Tutut... Uh, hold on, Tipsy! Wait! <laughs> What's that you got? A knife! No! Very much Tipsy's energy. I posted that for a gnome member. Little tip of the hat to Tipsy. And it felt very fun. So, Rock, who has all of his belongings with him, pulls out the map of the neighbors that Volo drew for them. And then he looks down at his map and looks at Onyx. And... Thank you again, Sarah, for the saving throw water bottle. It had a straw in it, but it sucked in that it didn't suck. So I took it out, and it works perfectly now. So, ah. Rock looks to Onyx and goes, <clears throat> Well, the first thing I really want is spells, and most especially magic ink, because I had paper, I had parchment, actually, uh, and then Toot Toot took it, so I am... I mean, I have spellbook paper, and then you hear a... <sighs> I have spellbook... I have a couple spellbooks, actually. I have mine, and then a backup, and then I have Grumshar's, and then his backup. But in order for me to prepare a spell, in order... Onyx, uh, you are a, a very punch-em-up, beat-em-up kind of, kind of guy, but 
in order to learn magics, then if I encounter a spell, then I need to copy it into my spell book, which again, I have plenty of pages there, but I do want more paper. But if I encounter a spell, then I need magic ink to transcribe it and to practice it. I need roughly two hours of practice and transcribing work and homework and really studying it. And then 50 gold or 50 dragons worth of magic ink. So I need to find magic ink. And on this map, it looks like there is a purveyor of, of parchment and paper called Bookworm's Treasure. So may we, may we go there first? And Onyx, er, yeah, uh, it's the first time I ever, <laughs> yeah, and Onyx, the character I meant to sing, Onyx goes, hey, yeah, let's go. And Rock leads the way, and he goes, let's see, there's an actual, there's an actual map of, like, the little square block that they're at. So, they go into the Serdon Street, which is north, and then they just head west. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six buildings to the west or left. And then they in, they approach a building which has a lovely bank of windows inside, a lovely bank of windows outside, and then inside you can see shelves of books, and then you can hear Rock's feet patter in the fresh snow of oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, and his breath or little short little bursts of. <laughs> um, I love how Rock gets so excited for magic. It's great. I've realized. I, I wrote this down in my notes. I realized that mainly, I overall, for d and I play as Toot Toot, and then the other three are very specialized. So Rock is my, like, Dungeons & Dragons has a whole bunch of magic, so he wants to learn all the spells he can, and Rock is... And Onyx is the decisive... Well, if nothing's going to happen, then I'm going to beat him up. And then Toot Toot is the K... Nope. <laughs> and then Tipsy is the chaotic looter. So it, he's not murder hobo, but he is very chaotic, where he just kind of wants to do it. Where it's like where you save the game of Skyrim, and then you go and cause a whole bunch of mayhem, and then go to the previous save game file so that it didn't really matter. Tipsy has that kind of mentality, except for real-life in-game consequences. Also, for my calendar, now it is Shea 17, because we progressed today. So there are, this is the fourth game, the fourth day in-game. Which is very exciting. So, as they approach Book Worm's Treasure, and Worm is spelled W-Y-R-M, which is a type of dragon, the front of this bookstore is adorned with a charming sign of a dragon curled around a treasure hoard of books and scrolls. Inside, the shop is decorated with beautiful hardwood, and the earthy scent of old books permeates the air. The library fills the first two floors of this three-story building, and it somehow seems to contain more shelves than the building should be able to hold. So Rock opens the door and looks around and sees, indeed, it's it's smaller on the outside. Where there's just, on the right is the little counter. And on the left and then deep into the store are aisles and aisles and aisles of books. And then there's this kind of this spiral staircase a couple shelves in and a couple to the right uh, to the left and then it goes up and then you can see even more second floor the same as the first second verse same as the first so he goes in and then he's meted with he's meted he's met with a crunch on the ground and he looks down and there's this kind of small little fine gravel throughout and it's this dark green teal kind of little bit of sand almost throughout the aisles um <clears throat> and rock excitedly looks around and then he sees a dark 
green teal dragon um a short stout stocky dragon behind the the counter of bookworms treasures treasures singular and he he looks at the dragon and the dragon's like oh goodness hello hold on just two seconds and the dragon who's barely poking at he's what I picture is Onyx's size. So even though Onyx is 5'1", which is a little tall for, for a dwarf, then this dragon's actually like 4-something, where they're barely poking over the counter uh, without sitting on a stool or something. So then I'll, I'll do like, you can see the snout, because then the dragon looks at Rock and he meets the enthusiasm, academic enthusiasm, and... You hear a closing of a book that is unseen, and then the dragon lifts it up onto the counter, looks down. The It has a little pair of glasses that scoot down the snout as it looks down, and then it takes one claw in its hand and then scoots it back up, and then waddles out around the counter to meet Rock at the front. And what Rock thought was a green dragon born is actually, uh, upon closer inspection, as the claw readjusts the glasses on the snout, then Rock sees these two little racetrack lines on the snout where underneath it is shiny gold. And upon closer inspection... As the Dragonborn comes closer and kind of wipes its hands, then Rock sees that it is actually a bronze dragon, but there is so much patina all over their form that Rock mistook them for a a green dragon. And after um, this, this Dragonborn finished wipings, their hands off then you can see a little bit of the the green kind of fall and then meet into the um sand piles in between all the shelves and as they hold up their hands then the palms are bright bronze and you get a sense that you know when you see a bronze statue there are pictures of bronze statues of dogs where there's they're covered in this dull patina, except for the nose, where people over the years have just rubbed the nose of the dog. And that's bright bronze, where the rest of it is like a dulled off, dulled over being exposed to the elements. So that's kind of very much like the hands of this dragonborn, and then where the eyeglasses keeps getting scooted up. Those are the brightest parts of this short, stout dragon bronze dragonborn who walks up and goes oh hello my name is Paige the wordsmith and welcome to bookworms treasure how may i help you and rock goes oh this is very exciting i am a connoisseur of information and knowledge and this page you will be seeing a lot more of me i am quite excited and she goes oh well that's fabulous um and and sorry what is your name oh i am rock the purple i am a wizard um illusion type magic that is my my specialty and then she goes oh a learned magic user i am a sorcerer so magic is innate within me but i do love the study of academia of the magics so i would love to assist you as much as i can um and you good sir or madam excuse me i i meet few dwarfs up this far north and honest goes um I'm Onyx, I'm a guy. Oh, very well. And you, do you, do you have a, a car? A, do, would you like to peruse the shelves? Um, um, 
books about hitting stuff. Oh yes, we have we have the whole sections of martial arts and weaponry and do do they have pictures? We have the uh, page leans in. We have plenty with pictures. Don't worry, we can absolutely satisfy your visionary lust. Oh, lust. But, Rock the Purple, hello, welcome. I, where to start? And then Rock goes, I, I know, I have no idea. I, well, okay, no, that is not true. Um, well, hmm. Onyx? Yeah, what? Would you like to look at the picture books now? Or Yes. Okay. Page, may, may we, may you, could you please give me a tour of this fabulous location? And... We can start with the picture books, and then you can show me everywhere else. And then she goes, she m- matches again his enthusiasm because she goes, Absolutely, Mr. Onyx, sir, if you could follow me. And then she kind of prances and then goes uh, to the left of the shop and then up against the back wall. Pretty close to the counters are, instead of shelves reaching all the way up to the ceiling, there are shelves that maybe go up four, five feet tall. And they are bigger picture books. And she points out with a claw again. Uh, She brushes up her hands and more of this kind of flaky dandruff comes out where her hands are pristine and as you look all these shelves are pristine there is never any of the teal dust on the shelves but unfortunately it's like walking through a beachside bar where every aisle is very sandy so she Wipes her hands together and then adjusts her glasses to go up. And she points with the middle finger claw at the books and goes, These are weapons. These are, hmm, I would say these are anatomy books where it shows the skeletons and uh, different animals of the area. And then automatically, immediately, Onyx's arms go out to those picture books. And then he grabs one and and just, like, sits into these. There's like three beanbag chairs that are kid size but onyx is pretty kid size so he sits down and he immediately opens it and one how onyx is pretty smart he wouldn't have it upside down but he takes one that looks like it has the fewest amount of words sits down oh wow oh that thing's huge (laughs) so he will be satiated for a while there and then rock looks down excellent now please the rest i want to know everything and she goes you have found a home away from home let me show you so they go up and down the aisles she points out all of the subject matter and like there are multiple shelves each of each school of magic and there's you know, evocation and illusion and divination, but then there's also shelves that have two or three of each, like a book containing matters on how they all interweave. And there's books about history, and then just a bunch of, imagine a fantasy bookstore and all of the subjects therein. And this place got it. So... As they're walking and talking, then Rock is, yes, we actually just moved into the Troll Skull Manor. And Paige goes, oh, oh, is it still? Leaf was a a dear fellow. He was very involved with his, his alcoholic endeavors there, but is he still? And Rock goes, actually, he's, he's quite a fine gentleman. We had in encounter last night but we are on the (laughs) same page now and page goes oh you did it rock goes i did it um and 
Paige goes, it's it's interesting that you moved in there where it it, it was n- notoriously haunted. I would like to hear stories about that, if you don't mind. And Rock goes, no one really wants to hear my stories. I would be glad to. And um, as they walk past, then she goes, and this is the paranormal section, actually. Oh, this place has everything. Yes, it does. And they go on and... She goes, oh, well, since you are, since you are new here, um, have you, as a, a magic practitioner yourself, have you registered with the Watchful Order of Magics and Protectors? And Rock, whose, their voices came together, so hold on. Rock goes, actually, I did. Uh, are you as well a part of it? And then Paige goes, yes, I am. Um, very pretty, enunciated, and female. Um, yes, I am. Yes, I am. We'll get there. I just wanted to make sure you were, because uh, we then, that there's training therein, and actually, uh, as a, a member, you get a discount on magic things, if, if you would care to purchase magic things here. And Rock goes, actually, I absolutely, I ran out of parchment just this morning. I, I know what to do. Okay. Um, I ran out of parchment just this morning, so I would like 40 sheets of parchment, is what the money was given to me. And do you please say yes, have magic ink? And then Paige goes, what color? And Rock goes, oh boy. So then they go back downstairs and very much if you go inside a games and comic book shop and you see that they have the supplies in order to paint miniature figures, then they're bigger ink wells, but they span the color spectrum. So behind the counter, <laughs> they page and rock. Oh, there's a rock, paper, scissors joke somewhere in there. So Paige and Rock go to the counter, and you see, you see in the background, Onks go, That one's even bigger! I want to kill one of those. And then, up, uh, enthusiastic page flip. And Paige shows Rock, We have all of these different colors. So each one is 50 gold. And uh, take your pick. Also, I do have, among uh, among all the other uh, bits and books here, I have spells available if you are interested. And Rock goes, oh, I am very interested. But first, okay. Yes, where to start? 40... Sheets of parchment, please. Absolutely. Hold on. And she gives... Let's see. What would be a reasonable membership discount? I will say 20%. So, 4 gold, 40 silver, 20%. I don't know this myth. I don't know this myth. Ooh, excuse me, my tummy is growling. That was not a fart. 40. So, 32 silver altogether. Yeah. 40 times 0.2. That's 8. That's 20% off. So, 32 silver gets passed over. 3 gold and 2 silver. And Onyx now... Nope. Rock now has 40 pages of parchment, which is fabulous. 40 sheets. Great. And then Rock goes, oh, well, actually, I am down an ink pen also. So, and an ink pen is two copper. So... (laughs) 
Oh no. My head stopped working altogether. So two copper page goes, you know what? Since you are brand new here, and I, I feel like you will be here quite often if you buy one, you know, throw in another silver. No, no. Um, each ink pen is two copper. I will throw in one for free because you will be here quite often and I have not met someone as energetic about literature as me for quite a while. And Rocco's, I really appreciate that. Thank you. So that's 40 sheets of parchment and one ink pen. But now, Rocco's, excellent. Now, spells. I, again, am an illusion-based wizard, so I would prefer illusion magic if you have it, but you, what do you have right now? Uh, I would say, you know, I'm learning. I'm not the most novice, but I am pretty new. And Paige goes, would you say, would you say uh, on a scale of maybe one to nine, you're like a two? And Rock goes, that is exactly right, yes. So she goes behind the counter, and then you hear clinking of some keys, and you hear a sliding of a door, and she comes out with a... Hmm. She comes out with a binder. And she plops it down, and she goes, the first couple pages are the first two levels. So I have level one spells, levels two spells, and then three, four, five when we get there. But it sounds like you are not quite there yet, but you are learning everything you can, and I really respect that. And Rock goes, I appreciate that. I am, yes. So let's see. Um... Level one, comprehend languages I already have. Detect magic. Feather fall, I do not have. Find familiar, I do not have. Mage armor, I do have. Magic, ooh, I should do mage armor right now. But, mm, I feel, I feel very safe. And he looks over at Paige, and Paige gives a big old crocodilian smile. Um, shield, I have ready to learn. I just need magic. Unseen servant, yes. Magic missile, I have. Uh, level two, let's see. Arcane lock. Ooh, this one's good. Continual flame. That one I might. Totally need. <laughs> uh, dark vision, I already have. Does, does rock have dark vision? Let's see. Rot. Well, I have a whole... Yes, he has dark vision. I think the only one in my party that does not have dark vision is Toot Toot. Invisibility, I have that. Uh, magic weapon. Ooh, Misty Step Room. Suggestion. Okay. So. Asterix, pause. I meant to do this, and this was where my mind blanked a little bit. Before all my boys met in the foyer of the Troll Skull Manor, then Toot Toot. Well, no, as they all... Oh, what's timing on this? So, Toot Toot, at one point at the beginning of this episode, wanted to go up to Rock and go, uh, Rock, I imagine that you are going out for spells and paper and magics. And then Rock goes, yes, I am. And Rock, uh, Toot Toot goes, excellent. Well, since that is your passion, and I've seen you... Get knocked down, then get up again. You're never going to keep me down. I get knocked down. Well, you get knocked down, and but get up again. Uh, and then Tipsy takes a whiskey drink and a lager drink. Whoa, what? Let's do that before breakfast burritos. Mm, damn it. So, <laughs> um, I wanted to give you... How much is it for Magic Ink again? Because you said that in your room, I think. Oh, yes, that is going to be 50 gold pieces or 50 dragons each little. Uh, 
potion bottle. What's the little inkwell? Inkwell of magic ink. I need fifty dragons each. And then Tutu reach, reaches into his bag again and pulls out. In addition to the four gold that he handed over earlier, he pulls out a hundred gold and he goes, "There you go." And Tutu and Rock goes, "Oh no, that is far too much." And then Tutu goes. Now you listen to me, Mr. Magic Man. Is there a Music Man song in there somewhere? Was there a a titular Music Man song? Oh, I don't know. Listen to me, Mr. Magic Man. You will take this, because I have far more money than you, I know. And consider this also part of the payment for you taking the health potion yesterday that you didn't need to buy, but you did. For the good of the group. So here. Get something fun. Don't spend this on anything worthwhile. Well, do spend... If you want to... Don't don't spend it on another broom. How about that? And Rock goes, Oh, that is... My tummy... Again, y'all, that's my tummy. So... Rock goes, This is incredibly generous. Thank you very much, Tutu. Tutu goes, Yes. Tipsy, come back! Oh, he's so far... He's running. He's fast. <gasps> So, anyways, Rock has 100 gold of Tutu's money that I planned on doing earlier, but it wasn't in my notes. So, Rock goes, okay, on something fun, not necessarily. Okay. Page. Yes? So, I need, okay, I need to look, Victor needs to actually look at this. I want to learn S.H.I.E.L.D., Okay, well, I can help you learn shield. No, I have I have a spell book already that has shield in it. I just need the 50 gold worth of magic ink to copy it over. So I need 50 gold for shield. Draw a little arrow in my notes. But I also love new magic. So unseen servant, I could learn shield. Feather fall, find familiar, unseen servant. Shield, burning hands for 50. Okay. So, he has 292. Oh, fart. All right. Rock has 296 gold to spend. So, 50 of that will be for shield. The magic inks for shield. He will go, you know what? You know what, Paige? We are going to spend some money today because why else have money if we're not going to spend it? And Paige goes, I think, I think that, hmm, I think that is an exceptional idea. Yeah. So I will buy a second level suggestion spell. And then, oh, well, hold on. Okay. The Bookworm's Treasure Services says the shop contains books of all sorts. In addition, Page has a small collection of spell books and allows wizards to copy spells from them at the cost listed in the spells for sales table. She can scribe any of these spells as a spell scroll, but charges twice the listed cost for each of the service. So, it's not you buy the spell and then an additional set. Oh. No, it, it sounds like... Well, shoot, hold on. And Alaska. At the cost listed. Oh, so, no, I think it is you buy the right to read the spells... But you also have to spend your own. That makes sense. Yeah, okay, so it is pretty much buying the rights to the spell. <laughs> so then Rock goes, okay, sorry about all of that. Um, Victor didn't prepare. Um, well, Victor did prepare, but he wanted to keep things loosey-goosey. And then Paige asks, oh, this is interesting. Uh, who is, who is, okay, here's what it's going to be. Paige is going to be super wispy and 
higher, there we go, yeah, super wispy and a very high, heady voice. And then Rock is going to, when we're around Paige, shift down a little bit where it's more toot toot. And then whenever toot toot does arrive, then he can sound very different. Uh, so, Rock said, oh, well, Victor didn't prepare, but he wanted to keep things loosey-goosey. And then Paige asked, uh, who is Victor? And then Rock rolled a three on intelligence plus three. So with a six intelligence, then he kind of stares off into the shelves and he goes, I, uh, it's kind of one of those names where you just, it, where you don't know where you picked it up, but it's always been there, you know? And then Paige goes, I understand. Um, but you were saying you wanted suggestion, was it? And then Rock goes, yes, I want level two suggestion. So that's 75 gold. 75 gold for suggestion. Um, so that's 50 gold for the magic ink for shield. 75 to learn suggestion, but I will pay another 50 gold for the magic inks for suggestion. And minus three gold and two silver for parchment. And you very generously gave me an ink pen. So what is all that? That's 175, 170. Yes. Where's my ding dong? <laughs> Yay, shopping episodes. Where's my phone? Oh, here it is. Do, 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 do. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Minus 50, minus 75, minus 50. Is there anything else? Because this is a big old chunk of change. All right. And then, since I am paying for a lot, I want another thing of magic ink, but do I do Unseen Servant? No. Let's do Witch Bolt. Yes. There we go. Because I already have Mage Hand, but I don't use that often. And Silent Image and other things. So, page. All together, I will have, let's see, for shield, is that is that just an empty uh, ink will? And then Paige turns around, no, actually, this is, and then she reaches for it and brings it out, and she holds up this squat to match her squat short frame. All of these magic ink wells are squat and short. And she swirls it about, and inside, even though it looks like it's just air, then the surface tension is disturbed when she swirls it about. So there is something inside, but it looks like air. She goes, this is actually the perfect color for shield because this is invisible ink. This is invisible magical ink. And then Rock goes, you have everything. I love it. I will... Do you do you set up cots here? <laughs> and then uh, Paige goes <laughs> and her green teal grows a little darker around her cheeks. And she Great, that's the first magic ink, and then he was so Rock was looking through the binder for the spells available. But then she goes, and a and a level two suggestion. She closes the binder, <clears throat> puts it under the counter, and then she is down there for a second, and then she brings up this um, carefully rolled up scroll that's pretty long, like blueprint size, and thumps it onto the counter and rolls it out. And she goes... Do you have two hours to spare now? And then Rock goes, I sure do. Onyx, is that okay? What? I we have plenty of time, yes. Oh, how many? Hmm. Let's just let's just start with suggestion and then see 
where things go from there. And then, Rock, his purple cheeks turn a little bit more purple. Um, so, they spend the next two hours. What, what color would you like for suggestion? Says Paige, and Rock is looking at all the colors on the shelf. Um, let's do that, that dark seafoam green one. And then she reaches, and she's, she's going more towards like a, a cyan, and he's like, oh, oh, well, actually, the, um, the darker green blue one. And then she reaches up, and then you can see, like, the composition of the shot, like, the squat inkwell, and then her hand goes up, and the colors match. Matchmaker, make, nope. Matchmaker, matchmaker, make me a match. Find me a fine, catch me a catch. Anyways. So she brings that down, and they're both blushing so much. And they spend the next two hours, uh, more like, no, they spend the whole two hours. I was going to say that because Paige is very enthusiastic about, um, like helping rock that it would take less time, but they're enjoying the time together. So it takes a full two hours and rock now is no suggestion. Um, I will write that down somewhere. Suggestion. And then, so that's 75 gold just for looking at the scroll. And then as he's copying it into his spell book, which his spell book, I have never taken the time to describe. So his spell book is coffee book size, coffee table book size. So it's bigger than a normal book. Uh, it fits well in his larger frame because he's 5'11". And as he opens it up, it then gets impossibly big. It Like he opens it and it's, you know, maybe two inches wide. But when he opens it, then it's like this full... <laughs> foam book inside and he's starting to fill it up so um also the spell book is like this pretty generic it's like just a solid purple front and spine and back but it has these golden corners to it like golden metallic corners to every corner and he opens it up and he has very nice calligraphy handwriting and so they're working through the spell components of suggestion and the duration and range and school of magic and uh casting time and they're copying down the Oh dear. They're copying down like the paragraphs describing the spell and then how it affects the spell if you use it at a higher level and stuff. So then they they finish writing all that and they're laughing and part of the 2 hours is also so if you're keeping track of just the time that it takes to copy over the spell, then it's an hour and 45 minutes, but they're filling the other 15 minutes and then some with just getting to know each other a little bit. So then at the end of that, then Rock now is no suggestion. And then he goes, okay, whew, that, that felt like only five minutes. That was incredible. Um, and then 50 gold worth of magic ink for Witch Bolt, which... Bolt? Which 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 bolt color should we use? And then Paige this time like Rock asked Paige and so Paige looks up at all the colors and she goes How about this deep deep purple? <laughs> I promise I didn't mean for this to be so cheesy at the beginning, but it's like this almost black deep purple deep dark purple and so she pulls that off the shelves and then rock remembering his witch form last night which <laughs> witch form 
Where is it? Bam. <laughs> so his his rock his witch rock form his hero forge which was episode 13 Dean Spooky and I made the hero forge for it for episode 13 where you can uh get the link for it on Linktree linktr.ee slash Dean Me Adventures and like no so there we go nope wrong <laughs> I got rid of the wrong rock Oh my goodness. There we go. So, then, he gets that for Witch Bolt so that he can study it later. What else do they... What else does he need? Does he need anything else? Okay, yeah. And so, as they're finishing up, then they look over... Rock checks in on Onyx... And sees that at the bean bag, then Onyx has like twenty books surrounding him, just clattered on the f- not clattered, but placed on the floor. And he's looking through the twenty-first book, and he's just okay. So, how do I kill that? Because it has a hundred legs, and I'm gonna get every single one of them. <laughs> and then Rock looks back at Paige, going, "I think we still have plenty of time." And Paige goes, I've never really seen a dwarf that except, well, no, that's not true. They, yeah, that, that tracks. He, he seems very into his subject matter. I, I admire a man who is passionate about his passions. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm a wordsmith. I'm normally much better at using words, but I appear to be flustered. So Rock goes, uh, so, do you have, um, we used a paper bird the other day. Do you have, uh, a, a box of paper birds? And she goes, yes, I do. That is another behind-the-counter item, so let me go to her. And then she looks behind, and then she brings out one kind of thin cigar box. And she goes, uh, paper birds are, uh, since you used one already, <clears throat> They are quite useful and handy, and uh, that being said, they are also safe, and they um, elude um, interceptors, so unfortunately this is a bit pricey also. That is ten gold for ten sheets, and Rock goes, well, this is pretty much the only place I want to spend money, so this is very good. Let me buy a box of that. So let me just check my math real quick because I don't want to overspend. Uh huh, uh huh. Oh, I think I need to give money for that too. Shoot, hold on, sorry. Sorry, hold on. Okay, yeah, he still has a little bit of money. So, he, Rock handing over more stacks of gold uh, accepts this, and he goes, I think this will be very good for the party. And then, speaking of the party, we all, Paige, we came here our very first night. We assembled at the Yawning Portal. Do you know the Yawning Portal? And Paige goes, oh, quite well. Yes, it is... Um, uh, before Ale Deep closed down, well, since Ale Deep closed down, then that is my uh, frequenting water hole. And Rock goes, ah, we, well, uh, of that, we are trying to bring that back up, but it's taking some time. We literally just got it yesterday, so it, it's, it, it will be quite a while yet before it finds its new form. But do you, Paige, have any books... If I say fireballs, bringing, like, transporting or teleporting or uh, whatever that school of magic is, would that, do you have something in your fabulous store about that? And then 
page takes a second. Hmm. What are the schools of magic? <laughs> I need to, I have in my notes, I've had from the beginning, um, I need to come up with a mnemonic for the schools of magic. Okay. So, conjuration, necromancy, evocation, abjuration, transmutation, divination, enchantment, illusion. Conjuration feels pretty. Creating objects or creatures or making them disappear. Necromancy, evocation, abjuration, transmutation, divination, enchantment. Oh, interesting. So, as a sorcerer, then Paige has a whole bunch of spells. So let's see what types of shit she can do. I'm looking for a locate something. Duh. Okay, maybe not. Um... Yeah, I'm looking for like a locate object, but that's not working. But she she knows her store, so she'll go, Yes, it is in one of these schools of magic books. <laughs> so she goes over there, um, and she Well, ooh, they should look they I should roll for this. So uh, Paige will roll. Uh, that is a natural 20, so uh, I guess she does. She automatically finds a book. She goes, I think, so the way you were describing it to me was that you were at one place, and then four fireballs swirled up your body, and as they did, then you were transported to Waterdeep in the evening, and Waterdeep is... Absolutely not on your radar beforehand, like, and none of your friends also, so Waterdeep and, and this continent is completely new to you, is that correct? And then Rock goes, yes, it is. Uh, uh, yeah? And she goes, okay, that sounds very much like teleport magic. Um, let's, let's look up teleport and see what the hell, yeah. Uh. So teleport, Wow. She she picks up one book from a shelf uh, that is conjuration magic, and she goes, I don't know who must have done this to you, but that is a seventh level conjuration spell. Um, from what it sounds like here, the, this spell instantly transports you and up to eight willing creatures of your choice that you can see within range or a single object that you can see within range to a destination you select. The range is ten feet. If If this is teleport... If you target an object, it must be able to fit entirely inside a 10-foot cube. The, the destination you choose must be known to you, and it must be on the same plane of existence as you. So there are various factors that lead into it. Like if you don't know it that well, then you go to a false destination, or you can go off target or on target. But it sounds like you were from the same plane... So this this world is very, very big. And from where you were, which was... Does Rock have a thing? He does not have a map from where he was from. But from what you told me also of your, your companions, uh, Vinfar was one of them, um, Deo. Um, I have whole shelves of, of maps and atlases that we could look for these. Ah. Yes, that is what happens. So then with that natural 20 also, she goes to uh, another shelf with just, it's spilling over with atlases, and then she wipes off her hands and scoots her glasses up her nose, and Rock goes, I, are those glasses perhaps a little too big? And she goes, oh, no, it's fine. And then Rock goes, I I I know uh, one of my friends is very good with with small tinkering, so maybe he could 
help you fix those glasses. And then Paige kind of looks up and makes eye contact. And then goes back to the shelves. And she starts pulling out these big po- rolled up posters and hands one to Rock. And then she takes one and there's uh, a couple reading sections in Bookworm's Treasure. But there's also one of them slanted drafting tables that you can put a map and then roll it out and then see. So they do so and they, with the natural 20, look over some maps and the world is very big. There's also like the continents of Wildmount and a whole bunch of other stuff. Alexandria. So they're looking and seeing where everything connects and then they do find Vinfar, which is a tiny little mountain area um way 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 to the west and then um deo is this collection in the middle of the map of a couple different continents all together and then <clears throat> Paige goes i i had no idea that we were really all the way to the east and how water deep there's there's a lot of there's a lot of this location um but they find water deep and then just how truly big all of the worlds are and how all they connect which is my way of making everything canon so all of the D D shows that i love are now part of my world i am like galacticus i eat the worlds and then i put them into my story so she goes uh did you know that our worlds were all connected like this? Our lands? And then Rock goes, I had no idea. I honestly, <laughs> goes to show you uh, an analogy for knowledge itself. I only thought that that one continent was the only continent. And lo and behold, there are dozens. How exciting. And she goes, yes. Um, yeah. Um, well, you, you have spent plenty of time here and I, I very much appreciate your company, but in order for you to return to the bookworm's treasure, you need to leave the bookworm's treasure. And I appreciate the substantial amount of gold you've given me. Thank you very much. Um, but... And then Rock goes, oh, yes, 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 I, I, I should head out. Um, Onyx has things to do, and Tipsy has things to do, so um, thank you. I will definitely be back, the wordsmith. Um, I, I have, this was a lot to know, so. <sighs> it answered a question and then brought up roughly 25 more. But shield and suggestion and witch bolt will definitely help. So I am excited and I will definitely be back. Do you prefer coffee or tea? Rock finds himself saying and then Paige blushes. She goes, oh, um, caffeine, I'm afraid, overstimulates me. So I am not able to study all that well, but um, I enjoy juice. And Rock goes, yes, juice. Let's go. Hey! Onyx, we need to leave right now. And Onyx goes, okay. <laughs> and then you hear a book just drop on the floor. Pick those up, please. Hey, pick those up, please. <sighs> and so Rock rushes over and then starts helping Onyx put the shelves, the books on shelves. And he is maybe showing off a little bit by looking at the title and then quickly whoosh, alphabetizing them in his head and putting them back where they go so they clean up pretty quickly and then onyx gets up and like wipes off his haunches of the sand and then um as as they all exit (laughs) as they all exit then rock quickly and flusteredly says "Oh, oh thank you very much over his shoulder and then he sees um a a swash of bronze on Paige's forehead 
where she finished wiping her forehead with the back of her hand. And then she's flustered also rearranging stuff on her desk. So that's very cute. Took me 15 episodes. But uh, it, I, I was thinking of like, okay, because Victor is a romantic at heart. And I was like, okay, which of my characters? So that's interesting. I did not. I had a lot more written down than that. I had like 15 more lines, but that's where that scene took me. And I was thinking about it. As I describe D&Me to new people, then I am mindful of how how I do it. Because I'm a storyteller and I know the beats that I want to hit. But when I'm in a scene, then that scene takes over and I don't hit all the points that I want. That... I don't hit all the points that I planned beforehand, but I still have them in my head and in my notes, so I can always come back to them later. But really, I don't think y'all understand, and I try to express it, how much a scene does deviate, which is great, because as a DM myself, I'm like, okay, I know how six different minds in a and d group, that's six different ways pushing and pulling to make a scene go completely off the rails or whatever. But at the beginning of this entertainment experience, at the beginning of this entertainment experiment experience, I was sure that I would know all the beats of every scene. And then it's kind of just, I think about it the week leading up to this episode and I pretty much plan it out. But really being in the scene, there's so much like me envisioning the environment and that adds new information. So that actually tilts the scene a little bit and like the interaction and really, really, it's really me giving a prompt to the scene and then letting it play out and plinko in these vastly different ways that I don't really predict at all because it's fascinating. I love it. So just so you know. Ooh, I can... In my book... Well, I'll do that later. But So, that's Rock. And um, poor Victor tomorrow has to write down all of those things that he got and coin transactions, and I would double-check my math. But, so that's that. The... Love it. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Love this game. Um, I'm going to use the restroom because it's an hour and a half in, and we have an hour left. And then we will find out which of my littles gets to go next. So tipsy or onyx. <sighs> there we go. Um, so I'm going to show you all my commercial reel. I'll be back. Hello. I'm the sandwich affectionado. I used to rap in college. I rapped about bread. They call me Two Slice and some other things. A Bacchanalia Beef Lust, the sweet sarcasm of maple bacon, the Cabale Stone A Kaiser Roll dusted in corn, not mutton bone, as was the custom in the 16th century. Victor, would you like to get us started? Absolutely. Nos altem fratres transfigurabe in RSA at AES at Secure Anti Informant. You guys are brilliant and I love what you bring to the table. Times change. Now you can set a budget and receive alerts about your progress. Times change. Now you can go online to schedule an appointment. <laughs> Sweet time. Wait, for real? Cut. Sorry. From the Atlanta Braves. Oh, oh, oh. It's a baseball player. How can one baseball player do this to us? Why aren't you wearing any shoes? We have to get the punk who did it to us. Whoa. So I got my buddy here. Yeah, there he is. All right, we got one, <laughs> two, three, four, five. Stop. Oh, oh, Stop. My cash pop number today is six. Like, haha funny? You mean all pixelated, blurry, and cropped weird? Just email everybody and send them a new file. Um, I'm gonna 
to a blacksmith workshop. This is now a hostile work environment. I'm gonna call HR. Hello, HR? Yeah, it's Rachel again. I voted for my producer because I like hot breakfasts and a crafty with fruit snacks. Degaf chocolate milk. We're gonna go inside and challenge some folks to play a new game called Flanks. If they win, I have to give them $20. But if they lose, I'm gonna drink their beer. I'm back. All right, y'all. That was very fun. And I love reading, um, because I came back with a couple seconds to spare, and I love reading what y'all are doing in the chat. I really love it, so thank you. <laughs> Yay. Now, <clears throat> Tipsy or Onyx next? Tipsy will be evens. Tipsy, evens, Onyx, odd. So, D20. 18 odd Onyx. So, as they leave, then Onyx went... As they leave the bookworm's treasure, then Onyx goes, I learned a lot about uh, monsters and stuff. I want, I want to kill so much. And Rock goes, well, that's very different energy than what I just experienced. So, I mean, we're both passionate about our passions, right? What? No, it's just something I heard earlier. Uh, great. So, Onyx, what do you want to do? All right. I want to find Floon. And then Rock goes, oh, okay, Floon, sure. Oh, because he said he had, because you wanting to do the, the tanning and something with the bones? Yeah, let's do it. So then Onyx will roll to find Floon. Uh, 15 plus 4 survival. Great. 19. He goes, well, let's check the yawning tower. <laughs> you get the yawning portal first. So then they head down to the yawning portal, and um, Rock, who is still off in his own little world, and it's a a quiet kind of first couple blocks going south, then Rock is... Just humming to himself, and Onyx is looking up. Uh, Onyx is looking forward and just trudging in the snow a little bit, and then Onyx looks up at Rock a little bit. <coughs> did you have fun? Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. I love books. Mm -hmm. well. <clears throat> and then after a while, then Ro Rock, Ronix, damn it! Then Rock goes. After he was very warm in the face, then the outside, the wintry water deep hits him, and he goes, and and it cools off his cheeks and gets his thoughts out of the clouds and more terrestrial, and he goes. Oh, actually, Onyx, as we are heading to the yawning portal, I did want to ask uh, this. And so he pulls out um, Volo's Guide to Monsters, and he flips over Volo Fam's autograph and goes to a section in the book, and then he pulls it out and he goes, <coughs> I have a couple questions for you, Onyx. Yeah, go ahead. Of these personality traits... Just, uh, I want to know your thoughts on them. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> okay, personality traits. One, I never relinquish my weapon. And then Onyx. <coughs> he squints his eyes and then he takes out his ice anchor and then holds it very close to his chest. Why are you asking this? Oh no, no worries. I'm I'm not going to take you. You can put it up, or you. Mm. And then Onyx hugs the ice anchor closer to him. Okay. Um. Two. I welcome any chance to prove my battle skills. Yeah. I. I yeah. 
Three, I always appear like I'm about to kill everyone around me. And then Onyx looks deadpan at Rock with Onyx's typical scowl. And then Rock goes, Number four, I love a good brawl. And then Rock goes, And then Onyx goes, <laughs> Yeah. Five, I drink the blood of monsters to consume my power. And then Onyx, uh, Blood, no. No. And then he shakes his head. And then his beard of vertebra clink together kind of like a a <sighs> morbid yeah like a morbid wind chime and then rock goes mm, i that is an answer great uh six i chant war dirges during combat and then onyx goes well I, there was at the beginning where i did pirate battle cries but i didn't like doing that didn't really feel like it was in my character. The very good responses. Um, I'm moving on to ideals now. Uh, one, strength. Showing superior strength brings honor to you. And then Onyx, warming up a little bit to Rock's questioning, kind of flexes. And flexes horde because my dwarf barbarian is built and stacked. So... A strength, 16 plus <laughs> 6. So, yeah, with the 22, then you can see his white getup just bulging, like, for the biceps and stuff. And Rock goes, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, two, prowlet, prowess, killing all your enemies is the path to greatness. And then Onyx goes, well, we didn't kill some stuff. Like... Well, we killed the human bandits, and then the troll, and then the gazer, and then the intellect devourer, and then Grumshar. But we didn't. Hey, hey, we didn't kill the the birds. Uh the the Kenku. Yes, that is correct. Yeah, we didn't kill them. So that's some. Um, hmm. <laughs> then Rock goes. It's a very good point, Onyx. Yes. Three dominance. I have. I will have achieved glory when all cower before my might. Onyx. Mm. For intimidation, I can get what I want from weaklings that fear me. Onyx. Mm. Five glory. The goals of others don't concern me. Personal glory is what I crave. Onyx scratches his beard. No, none of these really. Yeah, they, they don't seem like you. Uh, six savagery. I will not be controlled. And then Onyx looks down on his feet a little bit as they trudge. I, I used to be like that, but I, I'm, I'm better than that now. And then Rock looks down at the top of this stark white hair, the snowy white hair and beard that matches the streets as they go down south and that's a little character and emotional depth to onyx that rock hasn't seen and rock goes huh to himself uh we're halfway there um bonds one i will defend my tribe to the death and then onyx stops and then rock stops and then onyx looks up at rock hmm and then Onyx puts a dwarf hand on Rock's, like, upper arm. I got you. And then Rock, taken aback by this very poignant gesture, goes, well, well, thank you, Onyx. <laughs> thank you. We, can, we may continue. Then they keep walking. Uh, two, every serious choice I make must be decided by signs or omens from the gods. Onyx scratching his beard again. I don't really believe in gods. Like, they're there, but what have they done for me? Huh? That is a way to look at it. Yes, certainly. Three, I carry the teeth of a great warrior. They inspire me to commit great deeds in battle. And then, <laughs> Onyx goes, teeth. No, I got vertebra and a lot of femurs and leg bones and stuff. But not teeth. Well, I mean, the teeth are connected to, like, the skulls and stuff. 
and rockers. You you certainly have a lot of those. Number four, to avenge my god, I will kill every elf I see. And that one hurts rock a little bit because, you know, when you think of mistakes that you've made in the past of like middle school or high school or college or after college and they keep you up at night sometimes and you're like god damn it i don't want to think about these i'm a better person now than i was in 2000 earlier and then you think about it and you're like oh not proud of that person that you were rock very much gets a wave of that and then doesn't hear Onyx's response. So Rock goes, I, I'm sorry, uh, um, could you say that again? And then Rock goes, um, elves are fine. And then Rock goes, yes, elves, elves are fine now. I am a better person than that too. Then Onyx goes, huh? And Rock goes, number five, I will seek and destroy those who murdered my tribe. Onyx goes, uh, I don't have much evidence for that, so... No. Rock goes, Excuse me? Yeah, there's just not a lot of clues. But... I'm working on it. And then Rock... Kind of flabbergasted a little bit. Um... Six bonds. I owe my survival to a non-orc. And then... Rock. And then Onyx nods... Very... Directly. Uh, um, Raccoon Beard was a gnome. And then... Um, the other one was uh, an elf. So, uh, what was the previous question? Um, to avenge my god, I will kill every elf I see. Yeah, I don't... I don't agree with that one, because... Because Fenquin was an elf. And he was, he was a good one. So, yeah, not that one. But all the other ones are pretty great so far. Yes, yes. Um, and then Rock looking down at Onyx. Onyx is an interesting fella because he doesn't make a lot of eye contact. Or if he does, like, it's almost too much eye contact. But right now Onyx hasn't really been looking at Rock this whole adventure, like, even at the very beginning when they paired off, then Onyx stood right next to Rock and just kind of stared forward. And so as they're walking down south towards the yawning portal, then Onyx hasn't been making eye contact with Rock a lot. Not because of any social cues, it's just he's thinking his answers and looking down on the ground and looking at the stores and stuff as they walk by, so... With this non-eye contact, then Rock is looking at Onyx's head, just kind of blown away by the direct eloquence that Onyx is having so far. And then Rock goes, Okay, um, last little bit. Flaws. <laughs> One, I have a calm temperament and let insults roll off my back. And Onyx goes, Oh, I'm pretty calm for most, except like in... Except when I rage. Then that's kind of the opposite of calm, huh? And Rock goes, yeah, it's, um, yeah, yeah. How are you with insults? Uh, most, sometimes they just, I don't get them. But other times, you know, if I don't like them, then yeah, I'll punch them. Ah, yes. Two, I don't fear the gods... And have no patience for superstitions. Yeah. I, the gods are doing their own thing and I'm not I'm not a superstitious guy. I I do what I want, what I do. Yes, I, I I've seen that and I admire that of you. Um flaws three. I am slow to anger, but when I do become enraged, I fight until my enemies are dead, no matter the cost. Oh, uh, that, um... <laughs> Onyx is just very scratchy. Um, 
Uh, I, f- I fight a lot. Like, you know, that, that goes back to the rage thing, huh? But, you know, I won't hurt any of you guys. Unless I can't help it or something, you know? Ah, uh, very good answers so far. For I understand the value of civilization and the order that society brings. Meh. Nah. Yeah. Uh, five, I don't trust anyone. And then Rock. And then Onyx looks up. Yeah, that was old Onyx, not, not now Onyx. Now Onyx trusts. Now Onyx trusts you, Rock. And then Rock can't help but smile very big. <laughs> Thank you very much, Onyx. And last one, I promise. Six flaws. I believe in fighting... Nope. I believe in living to fight another day. And then Onyx nods. Yeah, that sounds pretty good, huh? It certainly does. And then he closes Volo's Guide to Monsters and puts it in his bag as the yawning portal comes into view. And then right before they reach the door, Onyx goes, Whoa, what was that? It was fun. And then as Rock puts his hand on the door in order to open it. He goes, Those were all the personality traits, ideals, bonds, and flaws in order to be an orc. And you've demonstrated more of them than I do. And then Rock opens the door and goes inside, where they see, like, the brunch crowd. And then (laughs) in one corner is... (laughs) One corner is... Toot toot with his elbow on a table and then his cheek resting on a fist and just looking off. And then Tipsy is sitting next to him just Aah! with like <laughs> with salsa on his face and like half a breakfast burrito in either hand. And he's just kind of flailing back and forth. And there's like six <laughs> breakfast shots in front of him. Uh, uh, empty shot glasses and toot toot. <sighs> Let me know if you want to trade. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, that's funny. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> Tipsy is a child. Have y'all had a pancake shot where I don't know what it is, but you pour stuff and then you take a shot and then you take a, a shooter, a chaser of orange juice, and it tastes exactly like a pancake with orange juice. It's bonkers. Mixology science, man. It's at a whole new level. So, <clears throat> anyways, they're at a table. Nope. <sighs> they're going towards one of the tables at the front, and then Floon is happens to be there, um, finishing up his breakfast and, uh, two or three breakfast shots, not as many as Tipsy just had, and so Onyx goes straight up to Floon and goes, hey, I want, like, tanning and bones and stuff, you said you know two guys, and Floon goes, oh yeah, well, um, that last one didn't go down so well, um, yeah, um, when do you want to do it? No. Oh, okay. Dernan, put it on my tab! And then Dernan goes, Ugh! <laughs> I sighs heavily, and then Floon sh- escorts them out, and then, yeah. So th- these guys are pretty cool. Um, Have y'all been to the field ward yet? Then Onyx and Rock say, no. And then they are going up the high road they're going up the high road and others go down the low road um from the troll skull alley then well actually from bookworm's treasure then they went south down the high road and the high road is the biggest street that goes north and south so they go north all the way and then floon is telling them about like his history excuse me um, just how long he's lived there his whole life and how he pretty much knows pretty much everyone, which Rock will see if he trusts that. 
with the insight check. That's a natural 20. So Rock can see straight through that because Floon is not as exceptional as a person as, you know, Rainier. So he might know more questionable people, but Rock goes under his breath. I think it is very impossible to know everyone in the city because that's millions of people. And surely you don't know everyone in the uh, castle. Nope, in the sea ward because those seem of a higher economic position than you are. And then Floon's just going on I'm like, yeah, so I found this other guy and he's, he's, you know, if you want to know about cards... And so then he's going up, and then they go through. They're right at the top of the trades ward. North ward. I'll get it one of these days. And then they go into, like, this little open area where they see a wall coming in from the west and a wall coming in from the east, and then they meet kind of at this gate that is open now, but there are these huge, giant, rectangular, like, four-story tall buildings where the walls meet. And from that, the doors are open. And then beyond, it's a whole different vibe than the soft, snowy, like, buildings that they were walking through. And then Floon kind of turns around to Rock and Onyx and starts stepping backwards and going, all right, gentlemen, this is the Field Ward. Check, keep keep a close eye on your pockets. And so then they go forward and they're met with, like, every building here is one story. There's not a lot of tall buildings. And of the buildings, they are in very poor condition. And... As they walk from the north ward into the field ward, then even them s- stepping in the snow is different. So, um, Onyx, like, ha- almost slips a little bit. Well, let's see if he does slip. Dexterity saving throw for Onyx. 18. They're rolling so good tonight. 18 plus dexterity saving throw, zero. So, just 18. So, he slips on the ice, but then he catches himself, and then he (sighs) huffs, and then, um, looks at Rock in a, in a kind of like, did you see that almost happen? Yeah, I did. To call back to all the questions of, like, slow to anger, but if something pisses you off, then you'll go. And so, Flume goes, oh yeah, well, you need to just check your, your footing, because this is what's called a corduroy log streets so instead of your nice cobblestone that you have in the north ward and pretty much everywhere else in water street we just got logs so they're like some are nice and thin logs but that some he gestures to where onyx just slipped some are you know not so nice logs so let's go and then they (laughs) he burps and then he heads up and then he goes to like this center little yard courtyard that branches off into a whole bunch of different big streets and he goes chop street is this way and so he kind of goes northeastward and then as they're going then rock is oh oh my um uh, the floon yeah what 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 can i do for you um this this place uh he gets closer to Floon. This place doesn't smell great, and unfortunately I feel that there are um, some shady characters in, you know, behind buildings and in alleyways. And Floon goes, yeah, 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 this is, you know, not the best place to be, but uh, again, check your pockets. Just keep them close because there are, hey, hey, yeah, you, keep, keep back. And then you see this kind of cloaked figure emerging from an alleyway and then scuttle back de- into the shadows and then leering at them as they pass. Yeah, uh, some of these, like, this is a really low... Like, this is a very poor district. Um, a lot of people don't have the fancy um, manor-buying money that you do. Or, you know, uh, a, a man of wealth like me... Well, I, I shouldn't say that. 
too loudly, but uh, yeah. So we're 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 almost there. And then Rock goes, but what about the stench? Well, be thankful that it's uh, winter where there's a lot of snow padding a lot of the smell because, hooey! Like in the summer, <laughs> you would not survive well, my friend. As he talks to Rock, and Rock goes, oh no. And then Onyx is still trudging, unbothered by the smell. Um, you can get a sense that Onyx's sense of smell is either really bad or really great, and Onyx might like the smell, but since he has a lot of dead body parts, then maybe, you know, dead things don't perturb him as much as a sensitive intellectual boy who prefers, you know, a bookstore vibe than rooting around in the trash looking for bones. So then... Floon goes, all right, and here we are. This, and then he gestures to this very thin stall, like sandwiched in between some buildings. This is my guys. And then Onyx looks up, and then he sees a sign that says, Buzzard Bros Butchers. And um, then he... He's like, all right, let's go. And then he opens the door. And inside, again, it's this really narrow um, store that has a very deli vibe um, where it has glass counters and then various meats of unknown origin just kind of hanging from hooks in the ceiling. Um, And especially like right at the counter. And then Floon goes up and, like, raps on the the glass counter and goes, Hey, Vinny! And then you hear, Hey, yeah, what? What do you want? And, like, this long vulture neck comes out from behind the glass counter. And this, uh, again, it's kind of short and stout, like, um, pages height. But, um... This vulture Aarakocra sticks his head out. What do you want? Oh, Floon! Hey! Fuck you, buddy! It's good to see you! And then Floon goes, Yeah, man! Uh, I have uh, have my friends. I have uh, new customers. And then Vinny looks over at Onyx and Rock. Hey, hey, hey! New customers! Good, good, good! It's good to see you. Oh, wow! You you already got bones in your beard. And then um, Vinny gestures with, like, his big black feathered wings and he doesn't have fingers but he has like these four feathers that kind of poke out as digits and oh you got uh, uh, bones in your beard already but i like this guy huh? <laughs> and then kind of thwaps onyx's front and onyx <sighs> and then um Flum goes yeah so um this guy's interested in you know bones and what what is it? Meat and game and trophies and stuff. Yeah, I want. I like bones. So, do you have bones? And then, Vinny the vulture kind of, <laughs> kind of flaps awkwardly and then jumps onto the um, top of his glass counter and then you can see his like wicked big talons on his feet, like clank up against the glass counter and he goes buddy we got so many fucking bones yeah we got you covered what type of bones do you like i like i like monster bones and like can you do anything also uh with this and then he holds up his popped gazer which in uh, in crappy encounters which was episode seven um they met half a beholder pretty much which is a floating eyeball with four eye stalks and like this clattering mouth uh jaw full of teeth but they defeated it so now it's kind of popped and deflated like a a balloon with still some internal organs and some pokey bony bits inside so and the eyes like just kind of like a jack-o'-lantern maybe in a couple more weeks because it's november but like it 
molds into itself, like kind of collapses in on itself. So that's kind of what the gazer is looking at. Like, and then he brings up also an intellect devour, which was in a couple episodes ago also, which is this brain with like lion paws. So it's this brain, but with four like big lion paws and they're out at weird angles because the brain kind of got squashed and he holds both of them up. Can you do anything with these? Holy shit. Look at those. Ooh, blah, blah. I mean, they smell amazing, but uh, yeah, man, we'll do whatever you want with it. What do you want? You want me to take out the meat of that? I can probably get some good, you know, like, ooh, you know, like when you eat cheek or or like uh, Rocky Mountain oysters. I bet that's what the gazer will taste like if I like, get that eyeball out. Ooh, that'll be good. Some nice, like, dessert meat. And then the other one, uh, you know, brain. People eat brain. I could do that. Oh, the paws are cute, though. Look at the little paws dangling down. Ain't that cute? Um, but, you know, yeah, that's, that's what we got. And then Onyx just is now like a kid in the candy store. And, like, he's so, his breath is, uh, uh-huh. Um, so you can do stuff with that. That's great. Can you do stuff with bones? Uh, I mean, like, I can make them pearly white for you. Sure. Like, if you want to, I mean, you know, there's, you know, the classic look of yellow bones. But, you know, there's a prestige in bones looking nice and pearly white. Do you want that? Um, I don't know. (laughs) And then Onyx is now, like, looking in the glass container and looking at the dangling meats. Do you, um, (laughs) then I, I started doing a... Jimmy Durani and Onyx. Do you think I could do? Uh... <laughs> uh, he sounds like every henchman from every Disney movie. For like, do what do you think, Bart? No. Um. Um. Do Do you have like other bones? Like when you 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 don't use the meat, or do, 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 can you sell the bones? Yeah, I mean, we we got we got weird animals. We got exotic beasts. We got monsters. Uh, you know, we have to fight with the other people around here, but I, but we are um, licensed. Let me fucking look at my goddamn notes. We are licensed members of the Guild of Butchers, so we're legitimate, all right? Don't let anyone tell you we are not legitimate, all right? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, we got bones. What you, like, you have to narrow it down a little bit, pal. We got a bunch of bones. Um, uh, just j- start with these, please. And then he <laughs> splorts both of them on the counter right next to Vinny as he's looking down at his claws and talons. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. He kind of, with his talon, uh, picks the gazer up and holds it and then kind of moves it around. Yeah, I can get the meat off of it. Or, or do you just want the bones? Are you a bone boy? Yes, I'm a bone boy. <laughs> All right, all right. I can. I mean, you know, it's it's kind of like a little skull. And then, um, <laughs> Vinny wags it back and forth, and then he pecks at it with his beak and goes, "Oh, I'm so sorry. It smells so good. I couldn't help myself." But yeah, no. Like, if you don't, if you don't want the meat, I can take the meat from you, and I could just give you back the bones of this. And then Onyx goes, "Yeah, that, that sounds good." Oh, okay. And then this, uh. Intellect devourer? Do you want the meat off of that too, or just like what the the ta- the claws I can get out of the the? You know what? If, huh? I like a bone boy. We don't have bone boys often. Floon, thank you for bringing this fine young gentleman, upstanding citizen, into our establishment. And then Floon goes, "Yeah, man." And then Rock, this whole time is just stock still and a little bit overwhelmed and he's holding uh his bag of the magic inks and the spell book close to his chest you know what okay so he i will buy the meat from you know what you look like a, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 here's what we're gonna do here's what we're gonna do normally like if you want the meat from these then i would charge you like the Fee to remove the meat, but then if you want to buy the bones back, the, how about if you let me take the meat from this, then I will give you the bones for free, huh? Man, and then Onyx says, That sounds awesome. 
All right, good. A man of business. Good, good, good. But uh, let's see. For these lion cub paws, I need I need a little bit of help. So, unfortunately, we don't do that here at Buzzard Bros Butchers. You know. So let me show you to a location where I think I think they'll help you out a lot. So we'll table this, and then he pecks at the gazer eyeball again, and he goes, "I'm sorry." So well, actually, thank you. Let me have some. And then he just helps himself with like seven big bites. Oh, God. Oh, fuck. That's good. Oh, that's it's sweet. It's like a dessert. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Y'all are missing out. You want some? Huh? Huh? And so with his other, he hops down off of the glass counter. And then with his other kind of, no, with his wings, he kind of fumbles. Come on. And then he brings up this little plastic cup and then he places it on the counter. And the plastic cup has these little plastic little toys in them where, you know, the free sample little swords? Well, they're little plastic, like a red free sample little axe and then a green little free sample staff and some swords and little hand axes and maces and stuff where you can like pick the free samples here go you try some of that huh it's real fucking good it's a little bit aged did you age it i i just had it in my bag for like two days mm, a perfecto and so then Flynn goes i mean i'm here for a good time not a long time and so he takes one of the plastic swords and kind of cuts off a little little tiny speck of eyeball and then um, I, a, I tried it <laughs> and then onyx um takes one of the he takes a little do you, do you have a, an anchor in it? i i don't got an anchor a little plastic anchor toy sorry sorry buddy but i got an axe i see you have an axe yeah an axe is good and so he takes one of the little red axes and he chops off a little part and then he eats it. And... Oh, that's really good. Yeah, see, a man of taste, of business savvy, and then fucking good taste. Hey, eat a little bit more of that. You're a growing boy. I'm a bone boy. Mmm. You gotta watch the way you say that in some circles, all right? Okay. And then Onyx and Vinny eat a little bit of the eyeball just just kind of savoring it and like both of them taking turns of like you're dipping <laughs> chips and salsa with your friends and then you're, you're both going chips to dip the salsa and you oh no 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 you go first no you go first no i can choose and then rock he is turning green instead of his purple he is like the bag has migrated up so you could just see his eyes and like he's getting pale and green just oh can we please move on? And then <laughs> both of them with kind of cheeks full look back at him. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, let me show you. Um, let me. Okay, come on. And so Venny then with uh, one wing lifts up this <laughs> little plank of wood that's on the side of the glass counter and then lifts it up and gestures for them to pass on through. Um, and then... Um, Floon goes in first and then Onyx who's still <laughs> munching uh, and then Rock careful not to touch any edge in this very meaty bloody establishment walks past and then Vinny mm, oh I just might eat the whole thing myself uh, and then he takes the he, he swipes up both of the bodies and then he, like, kind of does the vulture hop behind them <laughs> as they go into, like, this... Again, it's a long, narrow, thin building stall. And they go out the other side. Uh, they go through, like, this cold storage room, which is even colder than outside. And then Vinny kind of plops the two bodies down on a table. And in here are... Just a menagerie of meat, of question, like there's purple meat and like red meat and yellow meat and spiraling green carcasses and 
Vin goes, hey, yeah, keep going, keep going, keep going. Do not open that door to save your life. Keep going, keep going. No, open that door, though. That leads you outside. Go, 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 go. <laughs> and so then they go outside, and Vinny closes the door with his giant, awkward wings, and then he, like, hops over. And then across Stench Alley into another pretty much identical-looking building. <laughs> and then um, uh, at the top of this one, as Vinny opens the door and... Onyx sees talons and tanners, and then uh, talons and tanning, and then Onyx goes inside the door, and then Vinny yells out, "Hey, Vicky!" And then you hear from it, behind the counter, "Man, what? We got customers!" Oh, sh- hold on. <laughs> um, and then. Inside here, instead of a very deli area, this is like a, a wooden interior. Um, it's rustic. It has a wooden counter, and it's pretty much the exact same setup. Um, but instead, there are various hides hanging off of the walls and hanging from the ceilings. And then from the back, then another identical-looking vulture comes hopping out and going... What? Um, I was finishing lunch. And so he has a piece of sinew hanging, dangling from his beak, and then he like slurps it up. And then he has on an apron that is completely red. And you get a sense that at one point it was white. But you know, when you're at a butcher's and then you see the guy coming from the back and he has on an apron and there are splotches of red? No, this is soaked red there's not a spot of white on this and so Vinny pushes past the boys excuse me pardon me excuse me hey so hey come here you stupid and then he like slaps um Vinny who ducks down I mean what I, what? I was eating lunch what am I not supposed to eat lunch you tell me am I not supposed to eat lunch no you can eat lunch all right so we got a fine upstanding gentleman here who loves bones and hides. You like hides, huh? Yeah, I like hides. I'm feeling very sick. <laughs> and um, Onyx goes, I have, I have stuck. You, I'm okay. <laughs> and so then Onyx takes off his backpack, that his inventory that he always has, and he goes, Okay, I have. What do you want the bones here? Or in the other place. And then Vinny goes, Ah, you can have them here. Yeah, but let me see your inventory. Let me see what you're working with here. Okay. Um, and then he takes out, So I have I have these. And then he rattles his beard and it's the vertebra. And then he like throws his head around in the back dreadlocks clank because they have vertebra. I have those. Uh, and then I have... An arrowhawk skull, and then he lifts up the skull out of his backpack, and again, it's this giant, it's like both of Vinny and Vicky's bird skulls put together, this big, hefty bird skull, and then and uh, this vertebra of an arrowhawk, and then he lifts up the spinal column with still, again, it's gray and green meat on it now, and Vinny goes, holy shit, holy shit, yeah, no, that's really good, huh? That looks uh, delicious. Oh, uh, I think I'm gonna have dessert for lunch. Well, we'll hold you. Oh, judge just wow. <laughs> well, which is a little tipsy, but I meant more Joe Pesci. Um, so an arrowhawk skull and vertebra and uh, a hide, and so he lifts up the um in the last episode the four winged kind of furry hide. Um, and, and then one femur and then the six troll leg bones and the medium burlap sack full of troll foot bones and all of that. And then as the stuff keeps getting pulled out of the inventory, then Vicky is like, holy cow, this is really, truly amazing. Yeah, right. I just... 
This is... Sir, without your name, you are truly our best customer. Oh, well, thank you. But I have more. Oh, music to my ears. If I had ears, I just have these little holes. Look, you can pretty much see through my whole skull. Hey, what's your, what's your name? Onyx. Onyx, come here. Look, you can see Vicky. Uh-huh. And then Onyx looks through um, Vinny's ear hole and then can see v- Vicky on the other side going, Hi! It's me! Hey! I'm Vicky! Wow. I love you guys. Whoa. Hey, you know what? I appreciate you all that. Yeah, man, we appreciate your services. Um, but I have this wolf pelt. And then Onyx takes out the wolf pelt. And then, um, I don't think this place is big enough for the silver dragon hide. And then both of the vultures, as they're holding up the wolf pelt, they go, like, slowly in unison. You have a dragon hide? Yeah, one of my, uh, my friend gave it to me. It's really big. It's bigger than this building. You have a... It's a silver dragon hide. You have a silver dragon hide? You have a silver dragon hide? They both say at the same time, which will be awesome for the podcast. Yeah. And then Vicky... Vicky and Vinny look to each other and then nod briskly. And then Vicky goes into the back and then Vinny hops over the wooden counter and then goes to the windows and kind of (laughs) furls up his wings, blocking all the windows. All right, buddy. You came to the right place. First of all, I want you to know that. Second, we are also a member. We are legally a member of the League of Skinners and Tanners. So we're legitimate. And then you hear from the back, Vicky going, Well, I'm That being said, you come to us with great offerings and gifts. Um, I want you to know your hospitality is not to be frowned upon. But if you have a dragon height, that is worth... Uh, more money than you and I have ever seen, ever. So... Um, holy cow. Okay, so, you, (laughs) you, and then he kind of walks forward and uh, doing like a dance. You are gonna make us rich, you beautiful man. And then he puts uh, his big, long, like, each finger feather is like two and a half feet long. And then just up against Onyx's cheeks. And the, uh... Feathers are like splayed out from behind him now. And it's kind of like this. You are going to make a switch, you beautiful man. And then he like kind of pecks Onyx's cheeks. And then Onyx. I don't, I don't know. What, I don't know. What, looks up at Rock. I don't know what to do right now. Um, I say, I say. Rock says, holding his nose. I say we negotiate a price for all of this. Um, Can you prepare the... Oh, God. Can you prepare the uh, arrowhawk hide and wolf pelt um, and the dragon hide? Buddy, you came to the right place. And then Vicky comes back after you hear some, like, locks sliding into place. We are the best in the biz, so, yeah. Look at this wolf pelt. Look at this arrowhawk hide. I can, I can... I can melt the skin. I can melt the meat off of this arrowhawk spinal cord. And it, I I bet it'll be a little tasty. And then he pecks at the the spinal column and then Vicky and then Vinny also comes over and pecks the spinal column so both of them are pecking in the spinal column. Sorry, sorry, can't help us. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. It looks so decadent. And then Rock. Okay, so I say we work out a price, and then Onyx, if you feel comfortable leaving all of these here, then what would be a good time frame in order to have his his bones prepared and and hides? Oh, v- Vinny says, kind of looking up at the ceiling and like picking at like he's using one of his like long 
black feathers to kind of dig around in his beak, picking up a piece of meat that lodged itself. And like, you know, when you have something in your tooth and you're picking at it, but he has a beak, but whatever. Um, let's see. If we, if we stop working on all of our other clients and then Vicky, like we have, if we stop working on all of our other customers, we could have these done in like two days. Right in time for Fade Day. Hey, Fade Day's coming up. This will be great for Fade Day. I'm, I'm afraid I don't know what Fade Day is, Rock says a little impatiently. And <laughs> Vicky goes, well, yeah, and Vicky goes, you don't, no, Vinny goes, and then Vinny goes, you don't know what Fade Day is? Well, oh, you might be new. And then Flynn goes, yeah, they're, they're new here. Okay, so, uh, Fade Day here in Waterdeep, uh, chess, what is it, 18? I don't remember. I have a calendar right here. Uh, 19. Shay 19, uh, it's, you, you wear, like, costumes and stuff and go around, and it's a whole festival, and it's a whole holiday, so, you need to be on the lookout for that, but, uh, yeah, we'll have it ready by Fade Day. And then Vicky goes, Ready my Fady! Um, I think, Onyx, if you don't mind, I think we need to work out prices for all of this. And then Vinny goes, Okay, another, look, another astute businessman. Oh, and then Vinny crosses his wings, and then Vicky crosses his wings. Oh, I can see, all right, all right, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, let's see. A lot of good. I like the thing. Do, do you want us to do anything with your, your, your vertebrae? You got very nice. It's it's like aged. Uh, your colored vertebrae in your beard and your uh, uh, dreadlocks and your hair. Do you want us to do anything with that? And then Onyx goes, mm-hmm. um, I, I like them in my hair right now, but also... Uh, if you, um, um, and then he will roll evens, yes, odds, no. Ah, uh, that is even, 16, so, yeah, here. Yeah. And then he, he, he takes a couple minutes, like, maybe, like, ten minutes getting all the vertebrae out, and, like, with rock helping. And then, Vi- Vicky from the back brings out like this big metal bowl and so then it it gets pretty full by the time rock takes out all his vertebra if you can if you can clean those and then the gazer skull and then all that other stuff that'd be awesome oh um for the silver dragon hide before i take it out um <clears throat> i promised my friend that i would make cool stuff with it for my friends and then he looks over at Rock. Hmm. And then he looks over at Floon. Um, yeah, for my friends. Um, my four friends. The, mm-hmm. And then... Uh, excuse me. But then also, um, what I want with the bones is I want to make like armor out of them. So for the femur... And, like, the vertebra I want to put back in my hair. But for the bones, I want to make, like, armor and, and bracers and stuff out of them, okay? Uh, that sounds like it'll be so fucking sweet. Are you kidding me? You're looking like, like a, 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 a certified bone boy. Oh, is he a bone boy? Yeah, he's a bone boy. I'm a bone boy. Um, so... Parentheses. Victor will come up with prices for all of this because I want them to be good prices. But so then they leave, and Onyx um, hands over all of his things, and then Rock gives a final. <sighs> Rock kind of looks back at. Th- the two vultures and Floon and does a general group inside check of, of mainly the vulture Eric Colcra. 
and that's an 18 plus <laughs> plus one 19 and even though they're in a very sketchy neighborhood and a lot of what they said a lot of their dialogue was in italics like rock can see a piece of parchment pinned up against the wall of Talons and Tanning and Buzzard Bros Butcher Butchers Buzzard Bros Butchers that it seems legitimate certificates from the various factions and guilds and everything they're talking about except for the apparently royal fee of uh, the silver dragon hide it all seems that they're above board for most stuff. So Rock also feels very confident that <clears throat> this newly questionnaire, excuse me. One water bottle down. feels very confident that this newly <clears throat> orc interviewed dwarf if they screw him over he would come back and pretty much completely destroy these stalls so rock is well that is his money that is not my money okay there we go so, with that, Ronk, whose backpack is the the lightest it's been, with a fresh face, and it's kind of where, like, if you wear a ring for a long time, and then you take it off, then there's that indent uh, around where the ring was, and it's like like a lighter color, but... All over his beard and dreadlocks, there's like the impression of where his vertebra was. And he he leaves fresh-faced in that regard and smiling the biggest and widest smile you've seen yet. And he's walking with pep in his step, walking out of the field ward, feeling on top of the world, being on top of the poster map. So... <clears throat> That is Rock and Onyx's adventures. Uh, that was so much fun. I love it. Two completely diametrically opposed adventures. But I like Onyx and Rock as a pairing as well. So next time we will see what Tipsy is up to during this time. Besides breakfast, burritos, and booze. Oh, That'll be the episode title for episode 16. But... That sounds very good. Breakfast burritos and booze? Are you kidding me? Mimosas or Bloody Marys? Bloody Marys would probably go better with breakfast burritos. Although, no. Spicy. Yeah, like mimosas, that's two different palates. But, like, some spice in that Bloody Mary and the spice along with the... Yeah, the tomato and the, the salsa. That pairs very well. So, anyways... That's going to be it for tonight. Thank you so much for watching D and Me. I'm Victor Rivera, and this is a show where I play Dungeons and Dragons by myself. So, thank you for watching and listening. Let me get down to my notes. I stream Wednesday nights on Twitch at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I throw this video up on YouTube Thursday mornings. And. Today's show will be up tomorrow, Thursday, November 11th, and next week's episode will be live Wednesday, November 17th, and you can find me on Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and in podcast form, the first four episodes. I want to get the fifth one done, but also I need money for rent. So, podcast form, anchor.fm, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and others, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Where can you find all that? On my link tree. <gasps> Link tree, link tr.ee slash D and me adventures and like gnome. And I roll to see which of my characters gives tonight's outro. So <laughs> let's do Tipsy's one, Onyx is two, Rock is three, Tutu is four, and then Vinny and Vicky. 
Oh, I'll I'll give Paige a chance. I'll okay. Paige will be five. Paige the wordsmith, and then Vinny and Vicky will be six. So here we go. Four. So toot toot. I was not in this episode, but thank you very much for tuning into episode fifteen. Um, how? Do, well, no, I was in the beginning with Leaf. Victor, you should add Leaf to the outro, people. I'm not going to do that. It was a joke. Anyways, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, Intervals of five. We've done three. We've done 15 episodes. How incredible is that? Thank you very much, and have a great night.